Hey there, welcome back to the EcoStruder and, and back for part two of three of my one year re-review of the Modix 3D Big 60 V2 large format FDM 3D printer robotic system of amazement. It's, uh, so basically last time we talked about a bunch of modifications that I've made to the machine to kind of make it a better fit for me about, uh, you know, the way I wanted to use it. Uh, some things were just sort of conveniences and, and stuff like that. But um, this time we're gonna talk about modifications I have not made, things that either aren't practical to do or I just kind of never got around to. Um, so this is sort of what I consider my wish list items for what the machine would do or how it would work and, and that kind of thing. Um, and then next time, part three, we will talk about kind of the, the, the overall, the recap, the, the review itself of the machine. Who it's a good fit for, um, did I like it, am I happy with it, would I buy another one, that kind of thing. Um, so you can look forward to that next time. Hey, just jumping in real quick. I keep forgetting to put these disclaimers at the beginning of these videos, but uh, I've made no secret of the fact that I am actually a Modix 3D reseller. Uh, I sell the machines that we're talking about here. Um, so please take that into account. That said, I try to be as unbiased and fair and open as possible. Hopefully you can tell that in the videos themselves. Um, they're not perfect machines. They're not for everybody. So, uh, yeah, just wanted to take that, uh, that, that, this moment to point that out. I am in fact a reseller. There may be some bias there, but I try to be as, as fair and uh, truthful as possible in all of these videos. But for now, let's not keep you waiting much longer and let's get back to past me talking about the wish list items for the Modix Big 60 V2 printer. Take it away, past me. There are some modifications I have not done that I wish would be done to, uh, to make the machine a little bit better overall. Um, some of these will play into the review that I'll get to shortly after this. Um, but just to kind of touch on a few things. Number one, to touch on a few things, um, is the interface, the screen. It's, it's this old clicky style screen, um, the discount rep wrap graphical LCD, um, which is fine. It works fine. I just feel like it should be a touch screen on a machine like this. Um, I don't know. It's a personal preference thing. You may not even want a touch screen, but for me, I just kind of feel like a machine like this that is you know so well built, so well designed, really should have a touchscreen interface. This just sort of brings it down to me. So that's one thing. Um, the lighting, I'm, again, I'm gonna turn it on just so you can see the lighting. Um, again, one, two, three. I love the lighting. The lighting is great. It comes from all sides. Um, it shines down on the build plate. There aren't any nasty shadows from only having lighting on one side. It's just really, really nice. Um, and that should be a standard feature of, of a machine like this. Um, at least that's how I feel about it. Uh, again, the wheels should be a standard feature. Um, the uh, extruder here. Now, to be fair, this didn't exist when this machine was designed, but uh, the Titans are great. Titan arrows would be even better. Um, it's a pretty simple upgrade if you want to do that, but it's so short that you would have to kind of redesign a lot of the, the parts here because the Titan Arrow doesn't have the nozzle come down low enough for the existing brackets to accommodate for it. Um, the drag chain would be too low and stuff like that. Um, even better would be the uh, new E3D Chimera. That thing looks awesome. Um, I want one. <laughs> so I would love to put one of those on here and I might have to do that. Um, Again, I made my hot ends modular in the way that the wires connected. Uh, I'd like that to be kind of a standard feature of a machine that is meant to be modular and modified. And then uh, on the bed itself, the way in which the motion system works is there's a, a one ball screw and then two smooth rods on this side. 
two ball screws and two smooth rods on this side. So this side is pretty stable. I mean, you're not gonna move those smooth rods. But on this side, the corners are essentially unsupported. And so there is, I again, don't know if this will show up on video, but there is just a, a slight amount of wiggle on this side that you can have that just doesn't exist on this side because of the ball screws in the corners. I would just like this to be mirrored on both sides, four ball screws, um, so that we don't have that, that issue. Um, that's, uh, you know, again, a wish list. The enclosure itself, uh, it is made of, these doors are thicker than the rest of it, um, but even these doors are kind of flimsy and floppy. Um, the, I, I would never recommend anybody get this machine without the enclosure because it, the way in which it holds the heat in and, and everything is just so much better than having just an open frame. Um, so the enclosure does serve its function, but this acrylic material, it cracks. Um, it, uh, you know, it's, it's relatively thin. Um, and it also, it, there's a lot of static electricity that's generated by here. And so it tends to get messy and dusty real quick. Um, again, I doubt you can see this, but there's just a lot of dust and stuff uh, on the enclosure. Um, and I just wish it would hold the heat in a little bit better. Uh, the other thing is that as, the, as I heat up the chamber here with the bed heater, uh, so when I'm printing nylon especially, I heat up the bed chamber to 100, uh, well, it, 126 is what I had it at inside, the inside temperature here. Uh, while I was printing nylon. That's 126 Fahrenheit, by the way, not Celsius. But I had it uh, heating up, and as it heats up, the acrylic just creaks and cracks, and it just sounds awful um, as it's expanding. And uh, I don't know, just overall, I wish the enclosure was maybe a little bit better, maybe a different material than acrylic. Um, I also wish that I could heat up the enclosure without using the bed to do it. Um, when I'm printing on Garolite, you want to print nylon on cold Garolite. It just works best. So if the bed heater is what's heating up the enclosure, but I need to print on a cold surface, that doesn't work. Um, I want the ambient air to be hot. I want the surface to be, you know, room temperature basically. Um, and uh, <clears throat> also you can only get, you know, so hot when your print surface is what's heating up the whole enclosure. So it would be nice if there was an active heater in there. The filament detection sensor. I got one of the first types that actually uses a 3D printed frame for the filament detection sensor itself. The new ones are much better, um, but it still is only detecting the presence of filament, not necessarily whether it's moving or extruding at all. Um, so actually being able to detect whether there's a clog, for example, and filaments not going through the nozzle properly would be phenomenal. Um, I'd, I'd really like that. Um, it would really, really be cool if there was a power outage recovery option. Um, some of the machines are coming out with this function now, uh, and it's just a really nice thing to have. I've got a small universal uh, or un uninterruptible power supply back there that I run the control board off of, and that helps me not have to worry about it as much but it would still be nice to have a power outage resume function where it would park the head and then, you know, uh, continue on once the power is resumed. Uh, I mentioned the bed, bed heater via uh, G-code control. Um, oh, uh, <coughs> so this one I've got set up as a single extruder. If you go back to the build video, I actually set it up as a dual extruder with the dual side-by-side -side nozzle setup, and I never used it, not once, um, in that configuration because I've, I've had got experience using that type of setup before and it's just not good. Um, and so I wish that I could do better multi-material here, um, either multi-color or multi, you know, types of material, flexible and rigid, um, or really dissolvable support, uh, potentially. Anything like that would be fantastic, but as it is, the current dual extruder setup, I, I don't care for very much. Um, I'm trying to get my palette up and running. I'm, I've got the upgrade kit to make it to a, a Palette 2 Pro S, um, and then maybe it'll be able to keep up with this machine. 
but uh, for right now, multi-material is not a, a great option for me. Uh, and then something that I have always kind of had in the back of my mind is something I don't care for very much, but not necessarily something that's a real problem because it's never actually been a problem. Uh, I just don't like the MKS Gen 1.4 um, control board back here. It just sort of seems like a, a weird place to cheap out. And then the uh, stepper drivers, uh, A whatever they are, 308 or something like that, I don't remember. <laughs> the, the stepper controllers, uh, stepper drivers that are in that board um, are fine. Again, they're fine. They're just not as good as a lot of the other machines have these days. So it would be better to have a better uh, control board and stepper drivers. So that's kind of my wish list. Again, some of that is easy to handle. Some of that takes a redesign of the machine. Um, and some of the few things are maybe problems that aren't really problems, but they're kind of things that maybe if I was designing this machine from scratch, I would do. And thanks for watching part two of the Big 60 re-review, one year review. Uh, and uh, this was the wish list items that I kind of wish the Big 60 had included in it from the beginning. Um, and we will get into the actual final review of the Big 60 version two in the third part of this video series. Um, until then, please um, do please uh, subscribe, hit the bell to be notified when the new videos come out, like the next one that will all be the actual review of the machine itself. Um, and uh, leave your comments below, send us emails, ecostruder at heartsmartproducts.com, uh, follow us on social media, all the good stuff. And uh, we'll see you in part three.